Okay. We'll call to order the uh, regular meeting of the Batavia City Council now this day, Tuesday, September 3rd, 2024. I would ask you to draw please rise for a brief invocation to be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Tonight I want to make a special mention of the many, many blessings of goodness and kindness and support of one another that I have witnessed in Batavia in the last few months. Many of these are things that are kind of on a personal nature involving our police or our fire department or our public works, but many of them are, and are the type of thing that you don't want to brag about or share publicly because somebody may be embarrassed or whatever, but I just want to say that Batavia is truly fortunate to have all the support by our city employees, by ordinary citizens, and people, several have called me in the last few weeks and just said, can you share with me or point me in the direction of where I can find a nice deed or a good act of kindness that I can do? So I'm very proud of the fact that Batavia today is a community where people are actively looking for good acts and kindness. And I think that really changes the spirit of Batavia to a very good one and certainly something that we all should strive to retain and pr promote f further in the future. Tonight, as always, we want to offer a special blessing from those in our community who are serving on foreign soil in the defense of the liberties of the United States of America. And given the heightened degrees of animosity and problems that are developing, we just ask that a special, special blessing be showered on each and every one of these men and women of America as they go about their vital missions. Also tonight, we ask for vision and understanding and opportunities to do good by our members of the city council as they act on the items of business before us, knowing that each one of them in their own hearts and minds is here to do what is in the very best interest of Batavia. We ask for all these blessings. Amen. Uh, somebody over here want to do the Pledge of Allegiance? Alderman. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Yes, the city clerk. Please, please call the roll. Barraza. Lancy. Here. Beck. Here. Pieper. Here. Malone. Here. Wolf. Here. Sulfa. Barron. Here. Lehman. Here. Ayazi. Here. Malay. Here. Ewer. Here. Sarone. Here. Vogelsinger. Here. 12 present, 2 absent. So we have the necessary quorum to conduct business. Uh, moving forward then to a reminder that if you're going to address the city council tonight, please come forward and use the podium and please use the microphone because without it, if you're talking, this is a televised meeting and you will not be heard if you don't speak into that microphone. So appreciate everybody's cooperation in that. Uh, mo moving to item five, items to be removed, added or changed on the agenda. Do we have anything this evening? You're seeing none. Uh, moving then to item number six, which is presentation of tonight's consent agenda. Alderman Beck, do you have this, please? I do. Your Honor, the consent agenda reads as follows. To accept and place on file the building reports for July 2024, the Historic Preservation Commission minutes for July 22nd, 2024, and the July financial report. And for approval, the August 30th, 2024 payroll in the amount of $1,005,023.95, the accounts payable check register in the amount of $5,265,778.78. Resolution 2024-111-R, accepting a utility easement at Wind Point Shopping Center, 201 to 491 North Randall Road. Resolution 2024-113-R, Microsoft subscription renewal. Resolution 2024-119-R, approving a contract with Michael Signs, Inc. for the 2024 city entrance sign project in the amount of $59,100. Resolution 2024-110-R, accepting the public improvements at 1459 Lewisburg Drive. Resolution 2024-117-R, acceptance of all public improvements and authorize the city engineer to release the letter of credit for public improvements at Tanglewood Substation Unit 5. 
Resolution 2024-118-R, authorizing an agreement with Trans Systems to provide construction engineering services for Illinois Route 31 Batavia Avenue restriping project for an amount not to exceed $45,000. Resolution 2024-114-R, authorized to enter master services agreement with BHMG Engineers Incorporated to provide professional engineering services. Resolution 2024-115-R, authorizing task order number one with BHMG Engineers Incorporated for engineering services for 13 kilovolt pole replacement. Approval and for approval, Class G special use liquor license permit for the September 21st, 2021 Pints by the Pond Brew Fest organized by the Batavia Park District and Resolution 2024-107R approving a contract with Electric Conduit Construction to perform 15 kV and 34 kV underground circuit installation across Norcross Drive. Your Honor, I move we approve the consent agenda as read. Second. A motion and second for the approval of the consent agendas presented and read. Any discussion? Kirk, please call the roll. Beck? Aye. Pieper? Aye. Malone? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Sulfa? Aye. Barron? Aye. Lehman? Aye. Ayazi? Aye. Malay? Aye. Ewer? Aye. Cerrone? Aye. Vogelsinger? Aye. Lancy? Aye. 13 yes, no, no, one absent. Consent agenda is approved. All right, uh, moving then to item seven, items from the public, matters from the public for items not on the agenda. Do we have anybody this evening? Should you come forward, please, and use the microphone? Good evening. Yes, okay. My name is Patty Lackman, and I am co-president of the Central Kane County League of Women Voters. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan organization that works to protect, protect fair elections and increase civic engagement. We also endeavor to influence public policy through education and advocacy. The Central Kane County League has, for many years, sponsored candidates forums to help Kane County voters become knowledgeable about the candidates running for local office and informed about the issues these local offices will face during the upcoming term. Many of you have participated in one of these forums. The League supports, whoa, sorry. The League supports action by appropriate levels of government to encourage energy conservation and the use of renewable energy resources. The League believes that these goals must be achieved through ethical and transparent municipal government. In furtherance of this goal, the Central Kane County League will, for the first time, ask candidates for local municipal office to complete a candidate questionnaire on energy and environmental public policy. This questionnaire will be made available in early January 2025, and although the League never endorses candidates, we hope that the candidates' answers to this questionnaire will inform voters where candidates stand in relation to the League's energy goals. To quote an environmentalist, most people view climate change as a global concern and don't necessarily recognize the opportunity to make a difference within our own communities. We, as community members, can often make the greatest impact by focusing on our own city councils and county boards. Thank you. We hope that all of you who will be seeking re-election next spring will complete the candidate questionnaire so that both you and your constituents are better informed on this important issue. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else in the audience? I guess the chamber report. Margaret, the CEO and president, is here front and center. I try to be ready. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for allowing me to speak to you this evening. And I always appreciate what you do to support our local business community and Batavia all together. First of all, I want to start, as I always do, extending a warm welcome to the businesses that have joined the chamber this past month. We have support over stigma. Batavia Hardwoods, Urban Apothecary, Drink Agape, Burgard, 
Berger, <laughs> sorry, Berger, Allied Moving and Storage, RJ O'Neill Mechanical Contractors, Oak Street Restaurant and Bar, Lucky Joe's, Grainology Brew Stillery, and Fruitful Yield as part of our growing Batavia Chamber com community. I know many of these businesses have been in business for a long time, but now they are seeking the help from and support from the Chamber, so we're happy to, to welcome them as members and celebrate anniversary ribbon cuttings with them. I do want to announce the big news is that the Chamber is over 500 members. It's been a goal of ours for a long time, and we've seen tremendous growth over the last 10 years, and now we have successfully achieved a membership of 500 members. So good news. Yeah, thank you. The Batavia Chamber is also thrilled to announce with great pride that Jason Stoffels, the owner of Enticing Cuisine, is being honored as a 2024 Donna Dallas Assey Award winner. This prestigious award, as you know, is given annually to recognize a chamber member for outstanding commitment and dedication to the chamber's mission, vision, and values. Chef Jason has a long history of supporting the chamber with his exceptional catering services for a wide array of chamber programs, including our networking events, our Batavia Women in Business Holiday Luncheon, our larger gatherings such as Chamber Chairs and Inspire, and he provides a crucial venue space that serves our local organizations in Batavia. His collaborative spirit and dedication and excellence in service make him a role model for other chamber members and a pillar of our community. So congratulations to Chef Jason. He will be honored at our chamber chair celebration being held Thursday, October 3rd at 6 p.m. from 6 to 8 p.m. at Grainology. He's catering. <laughs> I invite you all to attend this wonderful event with us and celebrate the chamber successes and milestone anniversaries for our members. The event is casual attire only, and registration is available at our, on our website. I also want to let you know about another special event that the Chamber is hosting that is coming up. It is our Eye on Aging event at Lincoln Inn, September, Tuesday, September 10th, from 4 to 7 p.m. This is our second annual event, and it's focused on planning for a successful retirement and, cre and creating an intentional, healthy aging strategy. By visiting vendor booths, attendees can discover local resources, interact with our experts, and gain valuable information. Breakout presentations will address aspects of aging, including estate planning, financial planning, safety, and aging in place. This event is geared toward those that are 40 and up, not just for old, elderly, uh, anybody who wants to age healthy and happily. Care partners and soon-to-be care partners will find useful information at this event that is no cost, and all are welcome to join us. Here are some other wonderful chamber events. On Wednesday, September 11th, we have our Coffee and Commerce at Chicago Expert Importers. Thursday, September 12th, we have our Batavia Women in Business After Hours at Geneva Winery at 4.30. We have our networking it, our new member showcase, highlighting the new members that have joined the chamber within the last year. That, that will be on Wednesday, September 18th. So if you want to meet these local business owners, please join us. It'll be at 4.30. We have our Lunch and Learn series on unlocking the power of ethical persuasion on Thursday, September 19th at 11.30. And then we have two ribbon coming, 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 <laughs> Ridding, oh my gosh. <laughs> Let me start again. We have two ribbon cutting ceremonies <laughs> at the end of the month. One is for Support Over Stigma. They are a not for profit organization that supports um, people coming out of the service. And we, that will be held at the Chamber office at 4.30 p.m. on September 26th. And then on October, October 1st, we have Batavia Hardwoods is having a ribbon cutting on McKee Street at 4 p.m. So check out our website for any details on any of those events and to register for our upcoming bigger events. Uh, before I introduce my esteemed guest, does anybody have any questions for me? Okay, you know where to find me if you do. Uh, and I would like to now introduce Michelle Fried Fridiani. She is a professional organi organizer and owner of Precisely Practical. Michelle is a wonderful in individual providing a valuable resource to our community. And I would like to invite her up to tell us more about her business. Thank you. Hello. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Thank you for inviting me. Um, my name is Michelle Fridiani, as Margaret had said. And I own Precisely Practical. It is a professional organizing business. 
I'm not a natural speaker, so <laughs> bear with me. Um, I'd just like to give you some background about how my family and I came to Batavia. So in 2007, my husband and I, along with our blended family of five children, decided to move from Texas to Illinois. And we were coming to be closer to family. We did some extensive research on town centralized to Huntley Plainfield at Montgomery, because that's where his family was at the time, and comparing towns with low crime rates, good schools, a decent cost of living, and a rich history, small town feel, and a family-oriented atmosphere. So Batavia was perfect for all of that criteria for us, so, and we've enjoyed being here ever since and still do live in Batavia. The foundation of my business actually started in March of 2020 while I was working full-time at an office, a uh, local Batavia business. Um, the process of getting started was slow yet steady. I continued to work full-time for the first two years of my business and helped my clients on weekends and evenings. Um, some of the local organizations that were instrumental in helping provide me with a solid foundation are the Wabonzi Small Business Development Center, um, the Batavia and Geneva Chamber of Commerce, Start Something Studio, and a networking group called Boss Moms. Um, these groups have all provided me valuable information to get me going in the right direction. I am the sole owner and operator of Precisely Practical, and I offer a judgment-free approach to reduce the stress and anxiety that is associated with a cluttered space. I have experience to be able to help people in a variety of situations. Some of those include preparing to move by decluttering, sorting, and packing, as well as unpacking after a move, and downsizing, figuring out what to do with household belongings of a lost loved one when you know they have to find a place for their items and um, any other event in their life that has caused a lack of time or energy to take care of some of the items that have just built up. I concentrate on making each space functional in a way that fits each individual's lifestyle. Organizing must be functional and practical so that people that live in this space can easily find things that they need and put them back where they belong when they're done. Organizing is a lifestyle that can be learned in a series of small habits and is much more than buying a bunch of containers that are matching and all pretty. I work hand in hand with each client so that they are part of the process and I have the opportunity to learn how they use their space. I also listen to each person about their stresses and their concerns and make suggestions on how to create a space that can be more easily maintained and look better at the same time. The final decision on what to keep and what to pass on is always up to each client. I'm never forcing anyone to get rid of their things. It's their things and if they want them in their space, we will figure out how they need to find a home in that space. The, um, when items are ready to be removed from their space, I do take donations for them so that they don't have to worry about having different piles of donations to take to different places. So I take everything to my home, sort it out, and try to find the perfect place for their items, which actually makes them feel better knowing that things are going to be donated to local places like Animal Shelter for towels and blankets, or Chip in Batavia, the clothes closet, the food pantry, uh, veterans, all the other local area places is where I try to take items that I know can be utilized by someone else. Um, when the items are no longer usable, I also take whatever is approved to the Kane County Recycling Center. So those items are like cardboard and electronics and textiles, shoes, that kind of thing. If you would like to learn more about Precisely Practical and how I can help, please visit my website at precisely.practical.com. I also have a Facebook page and Instagram page and you could email me preciselypractical at gmail.com. I also 
except call and text at 630-389-9075. I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you all today, and I hope you have a good evening. Questions? Oh, <clears throat> yes. Don't leave yet. Um, <laughs> I would sing your praises, but me singing wouldn't help your business in any way. Um, she does the most wonderful work. You are so helpful. Very humble. You did a great job. So thank you for visiting us tonight. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes. So you, you could help me with my garage and the kids' playroom? Yes. Mm, okay. And actually, when it comes to kids' playrooms, I try to make them part of the process, too. They could learn something. All right, so they're accountable great. for their space. Perfect. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody else? Thank you. You got a <laughs> you got a much positive reception here. It's one of the best <laughs> ones I've seen. I appreciate it. <laughs> you must be doing really good work. So you come highly recommended. So congratulations. Thanks for coming to Batavia. <laughs> All right, uh, moving then to item nine, approval of waiving formal bidding for the nitrification and blower upgrades at the wastewater treatment facility. Who's got this? Anybody? It did not come to count. Or it did. Yeah, it did. That's right, we just did that. Okay, um, I'll make that motion that we waive formal bidding for nitrification and blower upgrades at the wastewater treatment facility. Second. Motion and second for the approval of the uh, waiver of formal bidding for the nitrification and blower upgrades at the wastewater treatment facility. Any discussion? I think this was fairly well covered during your committee. Yes, I was just didn't realize we had to waive formal bidding on it. Oh. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, court call the roll. Wolf? Aye. Sulfa? Aye. Barron? Aye. Neiman? Aye. Ayazi? Aye. Malay? Aye. Ewer? Aye. Sarone? Aye. Vocal Singer? Aye. Lancey? Aye. Beck? Aye. Peeper? Aye. Malone? Aye. 12 yes, or 13 yes, no, no. <laughs> Very good. Motion is approved. Moving to 10 then, which is resolution 2024-112-R, approving contract with naming mechanical for nitrification blower upgrades for $65,000. You got that one all one? Yes, I do, Your Honor. Thank you. Um, this was for um, work over at the wastewater treatment facility, and this is work that we're actually going to have a contractor do that's there doing the other work at the, the site right now. That was why we had to waive the formal bidding. And then um, we actually had 100000 budgeted for the repairs and the upgrade for this, and it's only going to be sixty five. so a good savings. I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion that we approve resolution 2024-112R, approving contract with Dom Me Mechanical for the nitrification blower upgrades for $65,000. Second. Motion and second for the approval of resolution 2024-112-R, approving the contract with Damon Mechanical for the nitrification blower upgrades for our sewer plant. Any further discussion? Kirk, call the roll. Wolf? Aye. Sulfa? Aye. Barron? Aye. Neiman? Aye. Ayazi? Aye. Malay? Aye. Ewer? Aye. Sarone? Aye. Vogel Singer? Aye. Lancey? Aye. Beck? Aye. Peeper? Aye. Malone? Aye. 13 yes, no, no, one absent. Motion approved. Moving then to item number 11, the administrator's report. Laura? Thank you, Your Honor. Um, uh, next Tuesday on September 10th, I want to remind everybody that it's going to be Taco Tuesday and an opportunity to meet your alderman. Um, that is from 545 to 645, immediately before our Committee of the Whole meeting next Tuesday. On September 14th, the Batavia Fire Department is having their uh, open house from 11 to 3. And is that at the West Side Station, Chief? Yes, and so that's at the West Side Station on Main Street, directly across the street from Batavia High School. That's usually a really well-attended event, great for families. There'll be all kinds of demonstrations. They'll be giving tours of their facilities, letting the kids, you know, get on the trucks and things like that. So that's always a great time. Again, that's September 14th um, from 11 to 3 at the West Side Station.
Um, and now for uh, information about something that is going to snarl up our traffic on Wilson Street, but it, you know we've got the construction going on at uh, Prairie and Wilson. And a major part of that project is the reconstruction of both of those railroad crossings. So it's gonna take three days to do it. And those three days will be uh, September 14th through 16th. September 14th is a Saturday. Construction is going to begin at 6 a.m. Um, they're virtually going to use all the daylight hours of the 14th, 15th, <coughs> and 16th to uh, complete that project. Um, we had hoped that this project could have been completed um, during the summertime before school began, but uh, the railway just was not able to uh, commit to the resources to get to that until um, this time. Also, um, September is Emergency Preparedness Month. And so we're doing a little bit something new this year. We've hired a company to work with um, our police and fire department, and also with Batavia High School uh, student uh, film students to capture some short segments on the importance of emergency preparedness for all residents. And the short films will be posted on the City of Batavia social media feeds uh, during during Emergency Preparedness Month in hopes of helping our citizens be more prepared in the event of an emergency. Uh, Anthony Isom and Tim Osterman from Community and Economic Development attended the EV Readiness Program designation ceremony at Argonne National Laboratory representing the city of Batavia last week. And we want to thank our CED staff for doing the major leg legwork on this project. For several months, they have been attending meetings and uh, putting in place the things needed in order for uh, the city of Batavia to receive this distinction. And they wanted to thank all the other departments that were instrumental in providing Zach and Anthony the information needed to successfully complete this intricate but rewarding program for EV readiness. And it certainly positions Batavia in the best way possible to uh, be ready for um, you know, the major shift to electric vehicles. In information technology, the GIS department has been hard at work um, building parcels and assigning addresses and creating attributes for the new Ashton Ridge development. In fire, um, as you know, we have a very robust program for paid on call, and we're really proud of the training that we provide to those individuals. And so recently, our POC recruits conducted job shadowing at TRICOM. This program allows our personnel to have a better understanding of the intricacies of our dispatch center. Chief Hansen attended a course, the L2455 Community Dam Safety Preparedness and Mitigation Training, which of course is uh, very good for the city of Batavia to have the, the latest in terms of being prepared for any critical incidents that might occur at our dam. And last Thursday and Friday, Chief Mazza and D.C. Johnson attended the Midwest Security and Police Expo that was uh, presented by the Illinois Chiefs of Police Association. Uh, there were a lot of different breakout sessions at that, uh, that uh, meeting, such as community policing, officer wellness, command leadership, professional development certification and law enforcement interactions with LGBTQ plus community. And also just, you know, a really good opportunity to connect with various vendors uh, related to law enforcement. So our time to be able to attend those type of expos is really valuable. In public works, the electric com completed replacement of the new pedestrian lights in the area of River Street and Wilson Street. The new acorn style fixtures match the other existing features along with, uh, Wilson Street, and these new lights are also LED. And also, IDOT has given its final verbal approval for the road diet, and the next step is to coordinate with the contractor to commence construction. Um, 
the uh, working together with streets department and uh, our um, communications manager, they've put together some really nice information on our website to educate our community about what a road diet is. And then also some information from the Federal Highway Authority about um, cases in other similar situations where road diets have been implemented and the positive effects that that had um, on the safety of everyone involved, whether it be motorists, pedestrians, bicyclists, and also that uh, things that people worried about, such as it increasing traffic congestion, just you know, did not seem to occur. These have had very um, positive effect in, in many places, and we hope that it will have the same result here. We've got a good example of that. I think there was a lot of um, anxiety about the road diet that was implemented just north of us, right? Just north of Fabian in the city of Geneva. And I, I really don't think that those congestion issues or accidents um, came to pass. So um, that seems to be a good evidence um, that hopefully we can have a similar result here. Um, the plan is for the road diet while it will go from Fabian Parkway all the way to Moose Heart Road, in phase one, it will not include our downtown area between Wilson Street and Main Street. And there'll be transition areas of the road diet between um, Houston Street and Wilson to go back to four lanes. And again, from Main Street to Elm to transition from four lanes back to the two bi bi-directional and center turning lane. Um, but if anybody has any questions about that, um, the numbers to contact are on the, uh, the website itself. And I think that's all I have, unless anybody has any questions for me. Questions, Amora? Thank you very much. I just have one thing I'd like to pick up on and what she just talked about uh, on the 15th of September, which is a Sunday, uh, the Batavia Fire Department is going to host the regional uh, rescue wagon group that goes to all the major fires and provides refreshments and food or war warmth for the firemen on a cold night. There's a group they're based both in the city and in the inner suburbs, but they're making a round of all the fire stations where they like to see what we got and who we got and where the stations are and whatever. So they called me and asked if they could come out on the 15th and hold their meeting at one of our stations. So they wanted to see both stations, so we're gonna start them over on the west side, and this is during this construction period. So I guess we're gonna to have to give them a map or a caravan or something to get from Main Street over to Wilson and take them down Cleveland mm -hmm. Avenue, no problem. But uh, they're going to be in town, and I was honored that they wanted to come in here and see what we had. But they said we had have a very good record of being a quality fire department. And I think one of the things that caught their eye was is that Batavia just recently got recertified with our insurance services office ISO Class 1 rating, which is the best rating a fire department can have in the United States for its ability to respond to things and man it and do whatever. So. To Chief Hansen's credit, uh, we ret retained that rating. We'd had it for, what do you get them for, four years? Or? And every four years you have to be re-rated, and we passed the test and got re-rated for another four years. So that has a direct impact on everybody's home insurance. Now, it doesn't do a lot for the bigger folks, but on homes, your fire insurance policy should be a few dollars less than if we had a higher rating because... Supposedly, all the insurance companies look at how good this fire department is protecting this property, and ours is as good as you can be. So I think everybody probably got a few dollars, not much, but it's a little bit lower on your fire insurance because we have this rating. So a lot of good things are happening, and I, I am very proud of our staff for all the things that we are doing here that catch everybody's attention and want to bring people to uh, Batavia to see what we're all about. Uh, do we have other business from the council? Well, then let's go to my report. Uh, I want to just talk for a minute about Saturday. Uh, I was over at the farmer's market, which 
was again very well attended, good crowds and whatever have you. And as I began walking around there, most people know who I am. And the one question that was bing, 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 right one after another was, Mayor, where, what TV channel can we go watch the Batavia High School football game on? <laughs> so I had a quick run around and find that answer out for myself, and I did get an answer. But then you talk to our older senior citizens, and I'm one of them, and you say to them, well, you got to watch it on this channel. And well, what station is that on? Well, I don't have that program in my TV. I got the other program. How do I get this? Well, I guess there's that answer you tell them to go to the computer, right? And, the the and easiest then, way is to go to the BATV YouTube feed. And that's the, the simplest. You can get it on any smartphone, any tablet, anything you have internet connect, connectivity on. So but where I'm going with this, our alderman here, uh, Mr. Wolf and Dave Lundberg are the announcers, as most of you know. On the and I had one of the gentlemen who was quizzing me on Saturday morning about where he could get the game. He says, "Those two announcers we got, they're like professional guys out of the TV on the national level. I mean, they know all the players, they know all the terms, they know all the <laughs> the, the terminology. It's just fabulous to listen to that and." They're just professional to the end. And so I just thought I'd publicly share that comment because a lot of people are saying that and we got one of them sitting right here with us. So he, he has numerous talents and certainly broadcasting on TV is one of them. So uh, Tavi should be very proud. Where I wanted to go with this though is, is I'm gonna try, I'm gonna talk to Coach Piron in the next day or two here and I'm gonna try to come up with some kind of a written thing that we can then post on the city of Batavia's website. So in the days ahead, when somebody make, some of you I think will be asked this, where can I watch this football game or this basketball game? You'll be able to tell them, well, go to the city of Batavia's website and there'll be a instruction on there that'll tell you what channel it's on and if that doesn't work, go to this or you can go tune it in on your computer and you can watch it that way because, you know, we got. We apparently have got another good football team in the make, and we uh, we got a lot to be proud of. And so all these folks are pounding their chests. I go to McDonald's many times in the morning, and that's been a frequent question over there amongst all the folks that the club boys that come in from uh, you know Homestead or whatever. They all want to know this stuff, you know, because this is. They tell me they're they're forming a club up at the. Homestead for football and basketball games that they'll have it in some room and they'll be able to turn it on the screen and anybody in the place can come down and watch it. So uh, this week, the the two furthest away were Arizona and Florida. Okay. So that, that a lot of our viewership is either former players around the country that watch um, usually on Friday nights. This happened to be a Saturday game, so it was a little bit different this this week. And the next the three season. games are all in Batavia, right? Yes, the next three are all at home. Yeah, well, some of the folks are thinking those are going to be good games, and we'll probably win them all. So we'll see. The only game that we know so far that BATV will not be able to do is the um, St. Charles North Batavia <laughs> game at home. Um, the Marquee Network bought the rights to that. First time a, a station has bought rights during the regular season. And they can buy them into Batavia? Yeah. So we're going to be precluded from that because they want sole rights to it. So that shows you how good the team is in town. <coughs> yeah. I don't want to make a speech about that, but I probably could. Uh, but I, I unfortunately, just... Unfortunately, I'll say it, Mayor, it's, it's all about the money. It's, it's almost as bad as the NIL stuff in the um, college ranks. It's progressing down into the high school ranks now. So they'll make money off of that broadcast, I guarantee it, in, in sponsorships and in their advertising, and that's why they're doing it. Well, when you're a town that's got as good a program as this one now has in its history, winning a couple state championships and everything else, you know, we got a lot to be proud of. And as a result, it's kind of spread into the senior citizens. I had this guy at the homestead tell me, well, I lived all my life in Broadview till I moved out here to be near my family. And we never had any support and excitement in high school sports like this town has, but boy, I've become a fan. I'm, I'm going to the games if I can, but if I can't, I'm home watching it on the computer. So 
you got that whole thing going for us here that's uh, all these people. And it's are, not just the football. We, we've had times where we haven't broadcast a, a halftime show, whether it's the dance team or the, or the band, and that draws a lot of reaction when that happens. So we make sure we get all that on air. So I just, I, I guess the theme of my comments tonight is Batavia really does have a lot of good things going. And in November, we are going to host the Illinois State Main Street program is going to be hosted in Batavia. And I've been asked to do some kind of a, a welcoming program about Batavia, specifically it's, it's downtown. And so I was meeting today with some of our staff. We've got, you know, we've got some really good attributes about the, this downtown, including this room we're in which is the room where in 1967, they made the flexible fuel line that was in the rocket that landed on the moon in 69 was made in this room. And that's, in the, that's been published in a book that the astronauts wrote, and it t talks about the, the flex lines were made in Batavia, Illinois. Then down the street here, we've got where Shumway Foundry used to be, and Shumway Foundry for about 30 years had the contract to make the molds for the Academy Awards. They were made down, down the street here. Then we had the Saturday Evening Post cover in 1958 of an ice skating right on the pond right here, which was a nationally published and circulated magazine. And then we get into the real landing of the man on the moon. And we had uh, several different Batavia situations there, including the fact that the minister at the Methodist Church between 1915 and 1918 was a gentleman by the name of Re Reverend Faye Arnold Moon, in interestingly. And he had a daughter, Marion, and Marion Moon ends up being the mother of Buzz Aldrin, who was the astronaut who first landed on the moon and planted the American flag on the moon. And upstairs in my office, I've got a picture of the eighth grade class in Batavia in 1916, in which Marion Moon is in the picture, and another person in the picture with her is Beth Sagrand, whose father gets some of the credit for American Flag Day. So we got the mother of the guy who put the flag on the moon with the daughter of the guy who helped create American Flag Day. Now, you talk about national history in the downtown area, you, you probably can't get much better than that. I mean, we've got bragging rights here that I'm not afraid to talk about them because I'm not making any of this up. This is all true history. So. Uh, we really do should feel real good about this place and what we've done and our history here because of things that Batavia has been involved in. And of course, we don't know in the future what the future will bring, but we got Fermilab out there that tells me is doing all kinds of interesting things. And I was talking to one of the former scientists who doesn't work there at the moment anymore on Saturday, and he was cluing me in that Fermilab's got some very interesting things that they may be talking about in the next year or two, so we'll see. But uh, we're, we're going to have some interesting moments here, and uh, I appreciate the good efforts of the city council to help work with the community to get a lot of this stuff done, because uh, uh, we're, we're a very special place, and I just, I'm very proud of that. All right, that's enough of me for tonight. Uh, let's go then to 14, which we need a motion to enter executive session for the purposes of discussing some litigation. So moved. Second. Moved by Wolf, second by Sofa. Uh, Kirk, call the roll. Wolf. Aye. Sofa. Aye. Barron. Aye. Lehman. Aye. Ayazi. Aye. Malay. Aye. Ewer. Aye. Cerrone. Aye. Vogelsinger. Aye. Lancey. Aye. Beck. Aye. Pieper. Aye. Malone. Aye. 13 yes, no, no, one absent. Take a couple of moments break here.